It's just too much. Too much. <laughs> I'm gonna start crying again. Um, it gets really, really overwhelming. <laughs> You just spit all over me. I know, that's kind of funny. Okay. All right, so now that we've gotten that over with, Darren looks very upset. Um, we are hitting day two of traveling. I hope you can hear me because the AC is like blowing in our face because it's really hot outside. Um, we just got finished eating at the Longhorn Grill in Carthage, Texas, which Ooh. is amazing. It is the most amazing place. Um, we took rolls to go. Um, and I think I took a picture of my steak because it's delicious, but I forgot to do like a video or anything like that. We're still getting used to this whole video thing. Um, but Darren is going to be driving us the rest of the way there. He's such a good driver. Um, <laughs> but I did discover something, um, that one, I need to have sunglasses again because the sun really, really hurts my eyes and I lost my sunglasses like a long time ago. Like probably like four or five months ago and I have yet to get them replaced. So one, I need sunglasses. Two, I need a bigger purse because when you have cancer, you have to carry around a lot of things. Like I'm supposed to be carrying around like my pain meds, my inhaler, um, my nausea meds. And then that's not to mention like my personal stuff. Like if I need a tampon or my lipstick or chapstick or my wallet. An emergency water bottle. Or... Yeah, like all of these things. And my purse is very small. And so we're gonna have to get a bigger purse. And I don't even like big purses, so. You know what's good about big purses though, man? I can sneak food into it. At least I'm eating, guys. That's that is oh, the thing. God. That is something that like Darren is just now getting to the point where he doesn't like freak out about it. Freak anymore. out about it because there was a long time in there where I was in so much pain and my body just like was not getting hungry because of the pain, and so I wouldn't eat. Like I just I could not eat, and so now not only am I actually getting hungry, like my stomach is growling, but I'm actually like able to eat some. I'm not able to eat as much as I probably should, but I am eating and I want to eat, which is a big difference between what it used to be when I was in so much pain, like in my stomach, and I just, yeah. I didn't even want to eat. Like, there dropped, was no desire. You dropped 40 pounds over the course of, what, two months? Yeah. Something like that. It was, which, you lost a lot of weight. I mean, there were some days where you weren't eating at all. Yeah. Um, I went from 122 to 128. Seven. Seven, yeah, 127. All right. Ready to get back on the road? Uh, no, but we have to, so, all right. Here we go. Here we go. We just finished our Kroger run. We got to Houston. Um, and so Darren is loading the back seat with all of our groceries back there. Say hi, Darren. Hey. Um, anyway, so I had said beforehand that we do a lot of our cooking like in the hotel. We bring our electric skillet and our George Foreman grill, and so um, we get a bunch of like microwavable frozen vegetables and um, just some chicken breasts and stuff, and so we can easily cook in the hotel and not have to go out to eat a bunch um, and eat a lot healthier, and so I got a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, it never fails that I'm always like getting really nervous and snacky during appointments, um, and I have to fast at different times during the day, and so this time we are actually um, taking a lot of like vegetables, like carrots, carrots, bell peppers, stuff like that, stuff that can stay out of the fridge for quite some time, um, and still be fine to eat, and we're gonna pack it in little snack bags, so that not only I have it like in the hotel for a quick snack, but also like while we're at MP Anderson, we can just grab some vegetables and eat them, and so it's a lot healthier. Um, oh, I forgot wheat thin. <laughs> Oh no! Crap! Oh no! No! So, a lot of people ask me if I ever have moments where it just kind of hits me, and I've been talking to Darren a lot lately, that I don't think I ever, I haven't had like a big, like crazy breakdown, but it's like I have these little moments over and over and over again that I realize I'm battling stage four cancer. And, um, Darren was already asleep and I was finishing up my devotional and so I came into the bathroom to get ready for bed and I was taking off my makeup and it got to the point where I needed to wash my face and I realized that I literally couldn't do it without waking Darren up and so I had to go in there and I had to wake Darren up and it just all kind of hit me that tomorrow, not only do we have to go through the test that we've gone through a million times before to check 
for just updates and everything, but I have new tests. a bunch of new tests for like a bunch of cardio tests that I can't even pronounce. And it's really scary to have to go through something new. I feel like with the CTs and the blood work and the x-rays, I've gotten so used to those that I get a little bit nervous, but it's my new normal and now there's something else that is that I have to be tested on and it's just too much too much I'm gonna start crying again um it gets really really overwhelming to just have to go through all of the tests over and over again and then to know that tomorrow I'm gonna have a new tests that I've never experienced before I don't know how my body's gonna react to them I don't know what they're gonna entail and that and that unknown is really scary. Like I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. And I know I know that God's got me and it's not even so much about the test results, as crazy as that is, as much as like actually having to go through the test. We've got a lot of stuff that we've just been going through. Um, it's been a rough couple of days. Um, just exhausting, exhausting couple of days for don't even understand why. It was just it's really just been Yeah, of, I mean it's really been just attacking I think with the little things like we got in an argument tonight over literally unpacking the room and how it was going to be done because we were both so tired and just wanted to get settled in and he was trying to help me and I was trying to help him and we were arguing over which one was going to help the other which is common for us. <laughs> even though both of us were in a lot of pain and hurting because Darren has been nauseous all day um and his legs have been hurting he injured himself going for a run a couple days ago and he's still been recovering from that and so it's just been a really rough night, um, and here I am in the middle of the night at almost midnight, crying the day before our test. But um, like I said, I, I know that God's got us, and I know that I'm healed because Jesus has already died for everything that I'm going through, and that God does not give us a spirit of fear of power, love, and of sound mind, sound judgment. And so we're going to finish getting ready for bed. I'm going to make a mess <laughs> washing my face with Darren's help. And we're going to go to bed and wake up tomorrow bright and early, 6 a.m. so that we can get to all of our tests. And hopefully I won't cry anymore because it hurts to cry physically. Like it hurts the tumor and my abdomen to cry. So, <laughs> oh, and tonight I had a weird like jaw lock thing that I've not really experienced before like this side of my jaw like just completely locked up and hurt into my ear and then like gave me a splitting headache like across my head um, came on like super super random don't know what that was about and so I sat here trying to work through that for at least what 10 minutes probably just as soon as I thought that the pain was gone it started back up again so more symptoms that just pop up out of random because my body hates me right now. And that's what stage four cancer is. Um, all right. Good night. night. For now. All Wait, right. are we in the right place? I don't think we're in the right place, but. I don't know anymore. We are lost. They have us in a new building this time around. No, I think this is the right building. If not, they'll tell us. I'm sure they will. Yeah, because that's the pavilion area over there. Okay, so we. Oh, gosh. Yeah, okay, so this was bad. Um, we could not find parking and so we had to park in like a different garage than we're used to. They have us in a new building that we haven't had to do testing before. And so we kind of got lost and turned around and had to walk across like three different streets in order to actually get to where we are going. So that is what we are doing right now. Bless Darren's heart for like actually pushing me through Two all the traffic. traffic <laughs> all the way as far as you can go. Keep going, keep going. And big breath in all the way back to normal. Come off and rest. We 
just finished the. <laughs> like literally, squirrel. No, no, get, get a video. Get a video. It's a squirrel. Oh my gosh, Darren. It's a squirrel. <laughs> All right. She's got a red face. I do. I'm very, very hot. Um. <laughs> <think> so. <laughs> Sorry. You can cut this. <laughs> so. We just finished our cardio test and the breathing test. Um, they went a lot faster than we expected them to go, which I'm not complaining about. Thank you, God, for that. Um, we did the PFT, whatever that is. Um, I think I'm using the correct acronym. Basically, a lung test to like test your breathing and everything. Um, I don't think I did very good on that one because she kept on having me like redo the test multiple times. And then when she was like um, pulling the report, I saw like a bunch of red numbers. Um, and it made me like really, really dizzy, really lightheaded, um, to have to like do the exercise she was talking about. And Basically like, they put her in a glass chamber and said, breathe. Oh, it was way more than that. It was, it was a lot of very, very specific breathing. Um, like, yeah, it okay. was, I, it was like breathing exercises that were difficult. Um, and I had to do like three or four different kinds of exercises multiple times. Yeah. Um, but anyways, she, uh. I had to do the test multiple times, and when the report came back, there was some red on it, um, which I guess doesn't really surprise me, and I kind of expected because I've always had really bad bronchitis and pneumonia and upper respiratory infections for the past like four years, um, and I have asthma, and now there is a grapefruit-sized tumor in all of the area that I'm breathing in, um, and the doctor last time, yeah, the doctor last time said that there was like specks in my lungs too. So I guess I'm not really surprised, but it's just weird to see the red numbers on the test. Um, and then there was the um, EKG, which was fine. Um, they just hook you up, and it's like literally the hookup process takes longer than the actual EKG. But then the echo, um, Darren had fun with the echo because he actually got to go in with me for that portion and like watch them like do the ultrasound and everything. And fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I don't like looking at stuff like that because I'm like that is the inside of my body on a screen, and I don't care to see that. And I married her for her heart, and I finally got to see it. <laughs> I love you. I know. I don't understand why, but you do. <laughs> um, sometimes he's smooth. Anyways, so that one, um, honestly, I, if I'm being like completely transparent, I'm a little worried about that one. He said that like everything went fine. Um, he was able to get all the pictures he needed, but we don't really know any of the results yet um, until we talk to our on oncologist tomorrow. But I've been having more pain like in my diaphragm and he specifically went down there and like did some testing or did some pictures and then like over into my liver did some pictures. Apparently your heart can sink that low and I had no idea about that. That's just another creepy thing to me that I don't even want to think about. Um, they even got her neck too. You can see some of the yeah. some of the red on her neck up here from where they were. They put the little wand, wand up on there. It. Yeah. Um, but the diaphragm area like just in my upper abdomen like right below my ribs has really been hurting a lot lately. Um, and making it really, really difficult to stop. And so it kind of made me worried when he went down in that area to do tests because it made my mind start racing like, oh, there is something wrong. Like, oh, maybe he saw something. Um, but he said that it was standard to do like down here and up here too, um, which makes sense. But since I've been having so much pain there, one, the test itself was painful because he had to press down hard on that area. And so like it, yeah, I was, I was really like praying to God the whole time just to like give me some relief. And so that was difficult. Um, I would say that's probably the thing that I'm like worried about the most, just because it was one of the things that like we had we have on our list to talk to our doctor about anyways. And then knowing that like he was doing tests on that area, I don't know. Anyways, I can I can get it all in my head about it, and I really have to like fight against it. Um, well, you know what we're gonna do next, right? We're well, gonna go get some amazing Italian <laughs> and forget all about uh, these tests until 6 p.m. tonight when we go yeah, back for more so, tests. So but. we we are heading over to our favorite Italian restaurant to um, get some lunch because I have to be fasting by 2 p.m. in order to do all of my CT scans and x-rays this evening. And we've got two, two hours and 15 minutes to get over there, so we should probably cut this video short. Yeah.